Hello, so in this tutorial I want to be going through how we can launch multiple asynchronous DQMH modules. By that I mean we could have multiple tasks happening at the same time, but different processes and different rates. So to go about that I'm going to start off with a super simple example just to show us some theory, but stick around to the end where I'll be going through a more complex vending machine example. But let's get started with a quick trick that's going to keep your project looking clean and tidy. So I'm going to create two virtual folders, one called modules and a second one called testers. Now what this will allow us to do is create multiple DQMH modules and they will automatically go into the modules folder for the libraries themselves. Then all of the testers will go into the testers virtual folder. Now for this simple chat room, I'm going to create three modules. I'll create a user one chat room, user two chat room, even a server to sit in between them. So I'll go to tools, DQMH, module, add new DQMH module. Let's create a server and change the overlay and give it a nice fetching green color. Now again, I want to point out the module type here. For now, just whilst we're going through the theory of DQMH, I'm going to keep the type as a singleton. However, notice we have singleton and clonable and they get shipped with DQMH, but you can also add different templates here. On this PC, I've added one extra template, which is an object oriented template. On my work PC, I have about seven or so other templates, but more on that as we get more advanced with DQMH. But let's click OK for the server. And I'll fast forward and do the same for users one and user two. Great, so now we have three modules here. We have server, user one, user two, and the associated testers. Now notice how they've all gone into modules and testers, and that makes it really nice and neat. Just as a quick recap, if I open up one of these testers, I can start the tester and this is for the server module. Notice how it's only the server with the lock key. I can start that module, show the front panel, hide the front panel, show it again. And here, all I'm doing is sending it requests and I can stop that module. Now this tester is going to serve as a great example of how we can launch one of these modules. So I'm going to click Control E to open up its block diagram. And then in this event structure, head over to start module. So start module executes when I click start module here. Now notice we have two VIs in this case that we've already seen before. We have start module and synchronize module events. Now if I double click on one of these VIs and click control shift E, that will take us to the location in the project. It's how we have start module and synchronize module events here. But notice how start module and synchronize module events sit either side of this register for events function. So I'll show you the label there. This is so events aren't missed in between the calling module, which is the tester in this case, and the DQMH module itself. Let's go through how this actually works. When calling the start module VI, a couple of really important things are happening. One of them is that the DQMH module gets launched and another is to ensure that no event messages are missed in between the calling VI and the DQMH module. This is done using rendezvous. Now if you haven't come across rendezvous before, they're like a meeting point before continuing with the main activity. For example, imagine you decide to meet with a couple of your friends at home before walking to the shop together. In this case, there are two rendezvous, one to make sure the module gets launched OK, and the other is to make sure both the launcher and the DQMH module are ready for the messaging events to start. The start module VI is the first to acknowledge that the module was launched. Then when the module itself initializes, it also acknowledges it was launched OK. The synchronized module events VI acknowledges the user events were registered, if then the module says it's also ready to continue. If then once all of this is done, the calling code and the launched module are free to communicate. 
So now we know how this launching works, let's actually implement it. So when I run the server module, I want the server to be able to launch user one straight away. So I'm going to go into my project and look at the user one module and inside the public API, drag in a start module and synchronize module events. Now, I want user one to be able to use its broadcast events to the server module. So to do that, I'm going to register those user events using this function here, the register for events function. So I'm going to drag down this function, it's a growable function, and I'll make some more space by clicking control and drag. I'll then wire user one broadcast events to the register for events. And then on the other side, I'll make some more space again in placing the synchronized module events. To ensure data flow here, we should wire up this ever wire to go through synchronized module events. And there's another item we need to wire here, which is wait for event sync. And we have to wire this across to synchronize module events. Now, this wire here, as you can see, is a simple Boolean. However, it's really important that we wire from start module to synchronize module instead of just putting a true constant here. The reason for that is if the user one module is broken for some reason, it will return a bad VI status and the value of this wire will be false, which means we don't want to wait for that synchronization to happen because it never will. By doing this, user one module is going to be launched. However, we're not going to be able to see its front panel by default and server isn't going to stop it by default when server stops. So let's work on those two things now. Because we wired these user events, we can take advantage of a broadcast event that's built into the framework called module did init. So let's right click our event structure in an add new event case. In then we have the user one broadcast events, event module did init, and let's click OK. If we've entered this case, we know for absolute certainty that user one module launched and was successful. So if we're in this event case, let's show the front panel. So let's go to requests, event show panel, and drag that in. Now, when the server shuts down, I want user one to shut down as well. So let's go to the exit case and place down the stop module VI. Brilliant, so you may have heard the term always start with stopping. When we're creating our framework like this or starting to build up our core code modules, we want to be able to launch our modules and stop them gracefully before we do any more functionality. So let's test that out. So let's go to our tester. So test server API and run it. Let's start of a module. Notice how the user one module front panel was shown, but let's show the server front panel as well. Perfect. And let's show that when we stop the server module, user one shuts down. So let's stop module and they should both stop, which they do. Perfect. And we can stop the tester by clicking the close function. Perfect. So now we've proved we've been able to launch a module and gracefully have it shut down. We made user one be launched as soon as the server was launched. However, for user two, let's show a different technique where we can launch user two maybe a bit later on. For example, let's say we want launcher two to be launched when we press a button. So I'm going to put a Boolean onto the front panel and call it launch user two. There we go. And I'm going to create a new event case. So add event case, launch user two, it is possible to register user events more than once. So if I copy this register for events, and remember to rename this register for events so it doesn't get confused in the scripting, we can wire the register for events function to the dynamic terminals from inside the event structure. However, if I want to add another set of events, notice how I can't drag them down. That's because those events weren't defined earlier, i.e. here. That is why we have functions called obtain broadcast events for registration. 
So I want to be able to obtain the broadcast events for registration for module two or user two. So I'll drag in obtain broadcast events for registration. And wire those down here. And notice how this register function also grew. So in the same way we started module one here, we're going to start module two over here. Let's head over to module two in the project and start module, synchronize module events and drag those over. And the same process as before, wire up the broadcast events, wire over wait for event synchronization. And remember about the data flow. We want to start the module, then register for events, event sync the module events, so we can pass the error through to the rest of the application. And of course, make sure your diagram remains nice and neat. There we go. So when we run server now, user one is going to be launched, but user two will only be launched when we click launch user two. However, before we launch these, we must remember to show the front panel and then gracefully stop the module as well. So let's head over to requests. We can show the panel here. And then stop the module in the exit case. And click save. Now, instead of using the tester, we can just run the server directly from the block diagram. So we'll run this. So we've got user one, the server, and if we click launch or two, hopefully we'll get another pop up, which we do. So now we have three modules here. And if we stop the server module, notice how the others stop as well. Did you notice that when I clicked the panel close button here, both the modules stopped and this VI stayed open. However, when I stopped the application previously, all three modules closed down. The reason for this change of behavior is because the second time I clicked this run arrow. And when I click this run arrow, this module goes into a launched internally state, which means when I go to items like initialized, the module knows it was launched internally, not externally. So it's going to have standard functionality and the front panel will always show itself. However, if I launch it from the tester, the front panel will be hidden. The shutdown behavior is also different. If I click panel close and it was an external launch, the VI will be hidden. But if I launched the VI by clicking the run arrow, I go to the exit case without hiding the front panel. And you can see in the case structures at the end, if external launch is false, then nothing happens. So the front panel stays open. To finish off this simple chat room, I'm going to use the skills we learned in the first few tutorials to create some broadcast messages to say that a message has been sent, and then I'll create some request messages to say that a message has been received. Now that I've created all of the messages for user one and user two, I'm now going to complete this application by filling out the functionality of server. Now server is going to be notified whenever a message was sent. So I'm going to add an event case and if user one sent a message, I'm going to send that message to user two by using one of user two's requests. I'll say update screen and I'll pass in ring and I will do the same for the other module. Okay, so now that I've updated the server VI, let's just run this VI. I've got user one up here, and that reminds me I should have initialized the front panel to default values. I'll launch user two, and let's see if I can send user one a message. Yep, and you can see that user one received a message. And I can send one back to user two. Perfect. And now if I close the application, 
both user one and user two will stop. Now let's say I run this again. Now what do you think is gonna happen if I try and send user two a message before I launch it? Well, that's what I want to show you now. So when I click send, I'm going to attempt to send this message to user two. But of course, because user two is not running, I get an error. I can click continue, you see the application stops. As a bit of a bonus and as a way of making sure we've really understood what we've gone through in the last couple of tutorials, I've created a partial implementation of a vending machine. And if I run the launcher, you'll see that this is made up of five different DQMH modules. Now we've been through probably 80% of the techniques I've used in this vending machine implementation and we're going to be learning a lot more. However, I want to invite you to download this code, have a look at how I'm sending the messages and how these different modules are being launched. Some of these techniques should look very familiar to us. Others, perhaps not, like the way we're sending information into a module. However, we have so many more areas of the DQMH to explore in future videos. So I invite you to like, comment and subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss the next tutorial. And as always, my code is on my GitHub page. So until next time, happy lab viewing.